الدين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وافضل الصلاة وتم التسليم على سيدنا محمد خاتم النبي وما من مرسلين ولا أله وصحبه سلم في مكثرة نبيت تعلم وتعليم وتذكر وتذكير ونفع والانتفاع والإفادة والاستفادة والحث على تمسك بكتاب الله وبسنة رسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم ودعاء إلى الهدى وتلالة على الخير وابتغاء وجه الله ومرضاته وقربه وثوابه سبحانه وتعالى وبعد رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل لقطة من لساني يفقه قولي وبعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله we are halfway through the month of Sha'ban we have approximately two weeks left until the month of Ramadan from the early indications, it looks like the first of Ramadan will be on the second night. So the first fast, the first day will be on the third, which is a Sunday. And the first Tarawi, inshallah, will be on Saturday. But early indications, according to the birth of the moon, etc., this is more likely the case. So you only have approximately two weeks little over two weeks to get ready for this blessed month and for those of you who spent last night in the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala kal raat ko aap sab ne jinno ne ibadat ki shab barat ki raat pe inshallah ye aap ke liye tiyari ho gai hai this will be a means of preparation for you for that month and for those of you who are fasting today those of you who have been fasting every Monday and Thursday then you will be those people when you go into the month of Ramadan you will only take the rewards, take the rewards, take the rewards. You know, when you do the planting of the seeds, etc., and then you wait for it, you start planting the seeds in the month of Ramadan. No, you want to plant it before. So when the time for the harvest comes, you take what is yours. You take the rewards, you take the blessings. So the, the few weeks that we have left, a couple of weeks that we have left, use it to the fullest, prepare for that blessed month, inshallah ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Nisa verse 29 He subhanahu wa ta'ala says وَلَا تَقْتُلُوا أَنفُسَكُمْ إِنَّ اللَّهَ كَانَ بِكُمْ رَحِيمًا Do not kill yourselves for indeed Allah is most merciful to you کہ اے ایمان والو اپنے آپ کو ہلاکت میں مت ڈالو بے شک اللہ تبارک و تعالی تم پر رحیم ہے Now this verse itself it's going to have to do with Ramadan by the way so that was just a side note. <coughs> this verse, it has three possible meanings that you can take from it. The first meaning is that Muslims should not kill each other. Whatever the reason may be, you do not kill each other. Except for when it is the case of kisas, retaliation. Now, this is an issue because if you look the West turn Muslims against each other. You look in the current state, what is happening in Russia and Ukraine. Russia and Ukraine, ye gayad Muslim hai. Ek dusro ke saad lar rahe hai. Lekin un mein se Musliman bhi hai. Musliman, Muslimano ke saad lar rahe hai. So within there, the Muslims are fighting each other. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us here, do not kill each other. This is the first interpretation. And the hadith which can be found in the collections of Imam Muslim and Bukhari, narrated from Nu'man ibn Bashir radiallahu an, from the Rasul sallallahu wasallam. The parable of the believers in their affection, their mercy and their compassion for each other is like that of a single body. Any limb which aches, the whole body reacts with sleeplessness and fever. This is the example of the believers. Ke Musliman jo hain, mu'min jo hain, wo ek shari jaise hain. Agar shari mein ek hissa jo hain, waha dard ho masoos hua, pura shari, wo bhaar usko a jayega. Wo bimar par jayega. This is what the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa is telling you. This is how you should treat each other. Not look at this Muslim person, he's getting beaten up. You know, you walk through the streets, you know, a Muslim man is being abused. A Muslim sister is being abused. And you turn around and say, it's got nothing to do with me. 
is their problem. There was once, just on Derby Road here, there was a police officer. He pulled over a woman who had a hijab on and he was swearing at her. He's saying, be careful of that X, Y and Z. She thinks she's smart. One of the brothers was driving past, he pulled up, jumped out, said, yo, who do you think you're talking to? Put it on his toes. Yakdam usko adaba gaya. He learned etiquettes very quickly, even though he was a police officer. First, he tried to say to him, get out from here. I'm going to nick you and all this stuff. He said, do what you want. Speak to people with respect. And you see the same thing happening now with the Muslim countries. What is happening in Palestine? Till date, Muslims are being persecuted in Palestine, in Kashmir. Where are the Muslims? The Uyghur Muslims are being persecuted. What happened in Burma? Nobody's speaking of. Ekta jo hum kehte the ki ye sahi hai, ye sahi Muslim ruler hai, hukumran hai. Lekin ab wo bhi Israel ke saath bister mein soya hua hai. You know he's even got into the bed with the Israelis as well now. Who am I speaking about? Erdogan, the Turkish Prime Minister. Yes, the Israeli Prime Minister was in Turkey just a couple of weeks ago, and he's there shaking his hand. You know, taking pictures, etc. Why? Because now his econ economy is collapsing, isn't it? So now he has to do something. But the Turkish people, they were stood outside. They were protesting against him being there. He's there taking pictures. Why? Because now it's all about money, isn't it? It's all about dunya. When your dunya comes under threat, then you very quickly forget about what your obligations are. But the Prophet ﷺ is telling us here, don't be like this. You need to be those people who are looking at each other. They are my brothers. They are my sisters. The second meaning of this is that you don't do such an act which the conclusion will be that you are destroyed. Don't do any such act which would lead you to destruction. And we take this from the narration of Imam Bukhari. The Prophet ﷺ, in, the, in this narration, we have Sayyidina Amr ibn As, an, the conqueror of Egypt. He is sent out on a jihad. He is sent out on a jihad. Leader the us Lashkar ka, and it's called the Zat Salasi. On ko khab me aisi koi khab aagi, to ab unpe gusal fard ho gaya. Now he had a, he had a wet dream, and then he needed to perform the gusal. However, it was very very cold. It was freezing. Bahot sardi thi. Now waha koi aag thi. You know, to warm him up, there was no fire, there's no central heating, etc. Right? He feared that if he performs ghusl with this water, is freezing, he's going to get pneumonia or something, he's going to die. So it was genuine fear for his life. You know, these are warriors. It's not, oh, you know, oh, the water's a bit cold. You know, I'm going to perform tayammam and then later on I'll just do, uh, I'll perform ghusl and then repeat my prayer. No, these are real men we're talking about. So we're talking about probably like frozen lakes or something. So they did the Fajr and He leads them in the Fajr prayer with this Tayyamam. The Sahaba are uneasy about this. They go back to Medina and they speak to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They Amr ibn As He's done this. This is coincidence by the way. Right? A complete coincidence. I was laughing myself. The Prophet wasallam, he questions Sayyidina Amr ibn As saying, did you do this? And he says, yes. And he said, why? He, then he recited this verse. Do not kill yourselves. Ke apko katal na karo. The Prophet wasallam, apne is baat pul muskaraya aur unko chhod diya. He just smiled and he did not say anything. Right? So meaning whatever he did, that was approved of. Because a prophet, a prophet, not just the Prophet wasallam, a prophet cannot remain silent in the face of something which is incorrect. They have to speak up. 
You understand? The third interpretation is Can you just hold that in your hand please? So, or just give me, I'll put it here and then you can take it and dissolve it. The third interpretation is that this verse is referring to those people who commit suicide. Ye unke baare mein hai jo khud kashi karte hai. This is a, a conversation, this verse is about these individuals. Now, in the collections of Imam Muslim and Bukhari, Hadith Muttafaqun Alayh, there is a narration which speaks about these people who commit suicide. And we need to speak about suicide because as I've mentioned, it's become the norm now. Every second youngster, first it used to be just the elders, that I have a problem with money, money, children, etc. But today, the young school, they will have a problem with them, they will say that we will be happy. They will talk to me here, they will talk to me that I have to be happy. You know, now, nowadays it's like a pick and mix, you know, and we're all going to go and take this, you know, that looks nice, I'm going to go and commit suicide. You know, the Prophet sallallahu said, whoever intentionally throws himself from a mountain and kills himself, he will be in the hellfire, falling down into it and abiding therein eternally forever. This is if you jump off a mountain. Then the Prophet sallallahu continues, whoever drinks poison, and kills himself with it, he will be carrying poison in his hand and drinking it in the hellfire wherein he will abide forever. Then he continues the Prophet وسلم, and says, and whoever kills himself with an iron weapon, he will be carrying that weapon in his hand and stabbing his abdomen in it, with it, in the fire, he will be therein eternally. That no matter what instrument you use to commit suicide, it is that very same instrument that you will be using on the day of Qiyama and in eternity in hellfire and you will be punished with that same weapon and you will carry out that punishment upon yourself. People think that I will be free from my problems. Oh no son or daughter, right? You have to be careful nowadays, isn't it? Pronouns and all of that. I identify as he and him. If you need to tell people you identify as a man, then, you know, you need to sort out yourself. People think that the problems will come to an end once you have committed suicide. But no, the problems just begin. Because once you go into your grave, you will not have the normal arus, the peaceful sleep that the believers will have. The believers aram se honge. They will be asleep, chilling. The day of the reckoning will come, aram se utinge, and they will think that we've just gone to sleep. A peaceful sleep they will have. But those individuals who commit haram, those individuals who commit suicide, they will be punished within their graves as well. They will be punished within their graves. On the day of judgment, these people will be those people who are drowning in their sweat because the sun will be brought so close. These will be those people who will not be able to cross the Pulserat. They will be dragged into the hellfire. These will be those people who will be admitted into the hellfire and there they will be remained punished. And even if they are in there for a split second, remember, being in the hellfire even for a split second is, will be so horrific, you will forget every single happiness that you had in this world. That is how horrific it is. 
You cannot even begin to imagine. I said this, some of the brothers must have seen the video. I was going to London on Monday and there was a lorry on fire. Usko aag lagi hoti ye lorry thi M1 pe. Wo dusri side pe thi. Aakhri lane pe aur main darmiyan ki lane mein tha dusri lane dusri taraf. I was in my car, the vents were shut off because I could see the smoke from far as I don't want no smoke coming in the car cuz the kids are there. Windows were closed. I kid not to you. I was driving and whilst going past this fire of this lorry, I could feel the heat in the car. I could feel the heat in the car. This is the world's hellfire. Ye duniya ki aag hai. The hellfire, the hellfire's fire, it will be so hot it is 70 times more more hot than the earth fire. Satar guna zyada. And in one narration it's mentioned that each part is the same as the earth's hellfire. The earth's fire. That is how hot that fire will be that you will not even be able to imagine it. There is a pit in the hellfire that seeks the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the hellfire itself. The hellfire seeks forgiveness in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from that pit 100 times a day. This is how horrific the hellfire is. So somebody who says, you know, it doesn't matter. I'll just be in the hellfire temporarily. It's not temporarily. It's something which you will not be able to handle. In the hadith in the Sahih-Ain, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi he gives a narration of a man. He says there was a man amongst you, before you a man who had a wound. Uske paas ek zakam tha. Or bohot taklif usse ho rahi thi. He felt a lot of pain from this wound that he had. To usne chaku uthaya aur apne haat ko kaat diya. He takes a knife and he cuts his hand. Or vaha se wound bigne laga. And because of this bleeding start, that started to gush forth, he dies from it. Us hoon ke bigni ke wajah se wo mar gaya. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Allah tabarak wa ta'ala ne is shas ke baare mein farmaya ke mera abid jo hai, usne mujhe rok diya, mene jannat uske liye haram kar di hai. He prevented me, he forestalled me, meaning he chose death upon himself. He, I have forbidden for him paradise now. The group, they relate the hadith that whoever kills himself with an instrument will be punished with it on the day of resurrection. So you will come on the day of resurrection, whoever commits suicide, they will be punishing themselves. They will be, be punished with that tool on the day of resurrection. Now, there are some questions based upon fiqh that we need to discuss here. Why is it that the Prophet ﷺ is informing us that these people will be eternally in the hellfire? When we know that the eternal hellfire is for the kuffar, it is for the non-Muslims. But the people who have Iman, they will be taken out of the hellfire. So why is this speaking about eternally abiding therein? The ulama they say, one of the meanings is, that this is referring to those who did it knowing that what they were doing was unlawful, but yet they did it and made it permissible for themselves. So it's not speaking about those people who did not know. Ignorance is an excuse to an extent. Then the discussion comes forth about the funeral of those people who commit suicide. कि क्या उनका जनाजा पढ़ना चाहिए या नहीं? Alama Hasfi, Rahimullah Taala, in his Dura Muhtar, the Great Hanafi, he says उनको गुसल दिया जाएगा और उनका जनाजा पढ़ा जाएगा. That you give them गुसल and you perform their janaza prayer. Ibn Humam, the Great Hanafi, Rahimullah Taala, on the view of Abu Yusuf, he says. There is no janaza for these people. That you do not pray the funeral prayer upon that individual who commits suicide. Because he says 
The Prophet Sallallahu did not pray over a person that was brought to him who had committed suicide. Okay, ek shaks aapke paas aaya jiska janaza aapke paas aaya aur aapko kaha gaya inka janaza par aap sallallahu alaihi wasallam ne inkar kar diya. So in that view Abu Yusuf says no, you don't perform it. However, Ibn Abidin rahimahullah ta'ala he says what is apparent is jo zahir hai wo ye hai ke Nabi Akram sallallahu alaihi wasallam ne us shaks ke upar namaz e janaza nahi padha. That the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam himself did not pray. Just the way he did not pray upon the makrood, that individual who owed a debt. Jo makrood hai, Aap sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ne, uske upar bhi janaza nahi para. The one who owes a debt, that is a makrood. But the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did not tell the companions not to pray. Ashaab ko nahi kaha ke us pe janaza na pare. Balke Abu Qatada radiallahu an, Aap ne us makrood pe namaz janaza para. Abu Qatada rahimullah, he prayed janaza upon that individual. <coughs> Hadith in uh, Imam Ahmed and it's in Bukhari as well. So this does not mean the Sahaba did not pray over that individual who had committed suicide. Because it just means that the Prophet ﷺ, what is apparent is that he did not pray. Because the Prophet ﷺ, salah is not the same as the salah of other people. There is a difference. So we cannot say, mutalakan, we cannot say outright that the repentance of that individual who commits suicide would not be accepted. How can we say that when a kafir, jo kafir hai, agar uski toba kabul ho jati hai, uske kufar se, or wo musliman ho jata hai, then how can we say that a Muslim who has committed a grave sin will not be forgiven. If a non-Muslim can repent from his disbelief and be forgiven, then how can we say that a Muslim cannot be forgiven from his major sin? So the summary of this bit is, a big scholar, bade ulama mein jo so hai, mufti jo hai, a mufti, they should not pray over such a person. They should not pray over such a person. A big scholar, the awliya, they should not pray over such a person. But a normal person, like myself and you all, we should pray over such a person. We should do it. Why? Why should the ulama not pray over them? Because the hadith in Tirmidhi, the Prophet wasallam said, Al-ulama'u warathatul anbiya. That the ulama, the scholars, are the inheritors of the prophets. So they should not do anything that the Prophet ﷺ did not do. This is why. Now, for those of you who may be going through any hardships, etc. You need to come into the realization. You need to come into the understanding that the Prophet ﷺ is, he is rahmatan lil alameen. He is the absolute mercy for entire mankind. Everything that he has left behind for us is there to guide us through our lives. Nothing that you go through, absolutely nothing that you go through, whether it is slander, whether it is divorce, whether it is abuse, whether it is oppression, no matter what you are going through, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is allowing you to go through it because He knows you can burden it. La yukallifullahu nafsan illa wus'aha. That no soul shall burden anything which it cannot bear. So if you are going through it, you will be able to go get out of it as well. Inna ma'al usri yusra. Certainly with hardship comes ease. Just be patient. Be patient. Seek patience through salah, through dua. Be those people who get, you will receive the assistance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through your salah. Through your dua. But you have to be patient. And patience is not, for example, you stub your toe. You start jumping around, punching the air, blinding, effing, and all of this kind of stuff. Start swearing, etc. Right? And then you say, then you calm down when the pain, pain is gone and you say, Alhamdulillah. I am patient. This is not patience. Patience is at the very first inflict of that test that comes towards you. 
But now this does not mean that when the first trial comes towards you, that you have done, you know, you have not reacted how you should react and now you should let it go. Now that you are doomed, it's not that. The Prophet Sallallahu said, follow up a bad act with a good act and the good act will wipe that bad act away. So as soon as you remember, now start being patient. And there is a dua. And for those of you who got voice recorded, recorded now, otherwise it's going to be on the YouTube channel, inshallah. Whoever is going through any type of uh, harm of the body, they are going through any type of laziness in prayer, they are going through any type of problems in their life, they are fe fearing harm of anybody. You know, you may have done something to annoy people and you think you're going to get beaten up. You know, whatever it may be, right? Whatever it may be, whatever depression, etc. that you may be going through, whatever prices on packaging are going up, whatever fuel prices are going up, and you feel all of this for yourself, everything that is making you feel depressed, your children are not listening to you, your spouse is not listening to you. The Prophet ﷺ and his Sahaba, they have left a dua for us. And the dua should be, this is the dua of Sayyidina Umar ibn Khattab. Allahumma inni ya'udh bika min al-hammi wal-huzni wal-ajzi wal-qasli wal-bukhli wal-jubni wa-dala'i dayni wa-ghalabati al-rija. Oh Allah, I take refuge in you from anxiety and sorrow, weakness and laziness, miserliness and cowardice, the burden of debts and from being overpowered by men. Recite this dua in the morning and in the evening, or if you can after every salah. And this will be sufficient for you. You will not have to turn towards anybody. We speak about, and I have this conversation regularly now with uh, Brother Omar, that we have this whole society around us now where we're speaking about depression and anxiety, etc. And people say, oh, you know, what does the Quran say about it? The whole of the Quran and Sunnah is there addressing these problems for you. The names are not mentioned specifically in there of anxiety and depression, but the cure is mentioned within there. This is a new term which has come about now, but the cure for it is within the Quran. That's why the du'as like this that the Prophet ﷺ taught us are in there. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling you, Inna ma al usri yusra, when he's telling you, La yukallifullahu nafsan illa wus'aha, when these verses are all there, all of these are there to tell you how to cure these spiritual diseases. So all you have to do is rely on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, bring about this reliance. And remember, reliance is not just this, where somebody is going through depression and you come and say to them, yeah, you don't have any reliance in Allah. That's why you're depressed. That's why you've got anxiety. No, come on, don't do this. This is not helpful. This is not the way of the messenger of Allah. And this is arrogance on your part. You are being arrogant by saying this to people. You do not want, know what these people are going through. So don't look from the outside and point fingers at them. Reliance is not just picking up the Quran and reading it and praying your salah. Reliance is true reliance. Reliance is true reliance. Reliance is everything gets stripped away from you. Despite that, you turn to Allah and you say, Allah is sufficient for me. Hasbun Allah wa ni'mal Reliance is that the Prophet Sallallahu loses his support from inside his house and outside his house. Everybody turns against him, yet Hasbun Allah wa ni'mal Reliance is Sayyidina Ibrahim Alayhi salam being thrown into the fire, the burning fire, and he does not turn from Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala. He says, Hasbun Allah wa ni'mal This is reliance. Learn true reliance and you will find everything comes easy for you. We say Allah, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us and preserve us, allow not any of us to go down the avenues of suicide and protect us and remove any forms of anxiety and depression. Please.